How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the next video. This uh, this topic's going to be a little bit longer because we're gonna have to write a little bit more code this time. Um, so I'm gonna break up the animation events into a two-part video. So to start off, we're going to create the projectile and get a model off the asset store. And then the next video, I'll show you how to hook it up to our attack animation. So real quickly, let's go into the asset store. There's a shuriken pack for free on the asset store. Just look for this one and then import. Import all. Okay, so we have this shuriken pack and we're going to create uh, a new object in the scene. And that's going to be our projectile. Let's rename that projectile. And what this projectile will have, we're, we're setting up to make a prefab here. So I'm going to build it up first. Let's look for the prefabs in the pack. And you can pick any one of these. I kind of like this one. So drag and drop as a child of projectile. And what we're going to want to do looking forward is when this thing gets thrown out, um, we want it to be spinning just to look right. So we need a pivot point on this um, model. And this model comes with the pivot point kind of on the side or on the edge here. So what we need to do is there's a space for anchor override of a model of a mesh render. So we're going to go into the prefab. So we're going to want to create an empty object. We're going to rename this the anchor. And then in making sure we're in the prefab, we're going to drag this anchor and make sure uh, it is in the zero zero position. If it's not, just hit the reset. We're going to select the shuriken and drag it to the anchor override for the mesh render. Now it's saying that this is the new pivot point that it will rotate around. Back into our hierarchy here, we got the shuriken set up with its anchor and the projectile. Let's reset that position in the world just so we could Check it out here. Drag him back right in front of us. And we can test on it a little bit. Okay. Up. Right in front of our face. And let's drag this entire thing down into a new folder or our game, we'll call it our assets. Okay, so now we have a projectile prefab. If we open it, we see that it has its projectile, uh, it has its star, and it has its anchor already set. So anytime we drag a new one in, it will have the same settings. All right, so now we need to write a little bit of code for this to um, make these projectiles work. So we want a projectile class. So let's go to our scripts, create, right click, create new C sharp script, and this will be our projectile class. Let's open that up. And if we think about it real quickly, um, what we're gonna need is we want a speed for this thing. We want a um, a model or a game object that it's going to be referencing, and we want a we want to be able to delete it once it gets to a certain range. Otherwise, we're just going to be shooting the, these things off throughout the world, and it's going to start getting too many in our system. So, what we're going to do is we'll make a serialized field. And if you don't know what a serialized field is, this is just the way to make uh, a private variable 
uh, visible to the inspector. So if you, you don't want too many um, public variables because it can mess up uh, certain things when you're calling for an object or something and it's there's dependency issues and you can uh, have multiple names of the same thing. So if you serialize fields on private, private uh, variables, then you can get away with naming them similarly uh, more often and then you can edit them in the inspector only. So let's do a float, call it speed, and set that to something like 10. Um, we also want a uh, let's game object that it's going to reference. And that will be the shuriken, shuriken, I believe. And then one more will be realize field, and we want that to be our uh, max distance that we want it to fly before it deletes itself. Go to max distance, and it start. Um, actually, before we do that, we also want a couple um, private variables that we don't need to see. Let's make a game object for the player um, to reference, or for it to reference the player. I'm going to initialize that at null. We will make a vector3 to um, store its spawn location so we can track the distance it's traveled. So we'll say spawn location. And then we need a float to track the distance it has traveled, and we'll call that distance. Then in start, when this gets created or initialized, we want to say the player is going to equal the game object. And we want it to find the object in the world with the tag player. So we're going to say player. And we need to make sure that our person controller is set to player. So we'll find that player in the world and use that as the reference point. We want to um, set its spawn location wherever it lo is spawned in the world. So that's going to be just its transform dot position. And then we want the rotation, uh, wh whichever it's way it's facing to match whichever way it shoots out forward like we had our animation doing. So we're going to say the transform dot rotation. And this is just the initial rotation. Once it's spinning, it's going to be different, but we just want it going in the right direction in the first place. So the rotation equals the players um, dot transform dot rotation. Okay, that looks pretty good. So in update, we want the forward motion. So we want to say transform dot translate. In the way you can do a forward motion, now that we have the rotation, we can just say we want it in the positive Z axis, uh, whichever way the player is facing. So this is going to be based off uh, itself. So let's say vector three dot forward, and that'll give us a zero zero one vector. And we can multiply that by speed speed and multiply that by time dot delta time. So that'll constantly every tick be sending it forward in our speed in the right direction. And then we want it to rotate. Um, so the shuriken is the game object we want rotating. The whole projectile we want um, firing off in one direction. So we can say the shuriken dot transform dot rotate and we want it to rotate around the y axis 
and we want that in local space. So if we said around the y-axis in world space, it would just be spinning around this origin point we had over here where everything's been spawning. We want it to be spinning around itself. So let's say rotate around the y, so it's gonna be x, y, and z. So zero on the x and y, 10 on the, or zero on the x and z, sorry, and 10 on the y. And then it says space relative two. So with x, y, z, and the space relative two is going to be space dot self. That's gonna give us the local axes. Next, we're going to get the distance and set that to the difference between its spawn location and its current distance. I'm gonna say vector three dot distance. And vector three dot distance just gives you exactly that, the distance between vector A and vector B. So not a whole lot of calculations need to be done there. I'm gonna take the spawn location and the transform dot position and it'll take the distance between those two. So what happens when it gets too far? We want to delete itself. I'm going to say if distance is greater than or equal to max distance, then we want to destroy it. So we're going to say destroy this game object. And that looks like it's pretty good, I like the way it's set up. So we're going to control S and save the projectile script and head back into our game. Now the video is already getting a little long for this one. So um, let's call it there and I'll start the next video with us attaching this uh, projectile to the animation and we'll get throwing these things. All right, I'll see you there.